Welcome Transformers fans, my name is Composite Energo and today I will bring you my review of the Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Deluxe Class Dreadwing and here he is in his jet mode and I'm happy to say that unlike uh, that this is that Dreadwing here is one of the few brand new molds or brand new figures in the uh, Beast Hunters uh, line of, of figures yeah that is really neat this yeah this figure is not a repaint or retool of anything. It is a brand new figure as part of the line that was first introduced in the Beast Hunters line. And on top of that, it's exclusive to uh, Dreadwing. So as of right now, this mold is only exclusive to this character and his Japanese uh, repaint. But that's different. I don't really count the Japanese exclusives too much. But just wanted to mention that. So yeah. Here he is, and what this is, this is a, what his vehicle mode is, is a very heavily modified Lockheed, Mar uh, Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II fighter jet. Albeit heavily, heavily modified and very bird themed. Because Beast Hunters, that's what they wanted to do. Really nice design, nice little details, don't look underneath like always because uh, kibble. But that's aside. Really nice detail. I guess big, I guess my biggest complaint is that you can see the hands of the robot mode and the feet. And that's about it. If they found a better way of hiding that, I, I think it would improve the figure quite a bit. Um, he does have some landing gear, which is this piece right here, which can fold up and down. And you just fold it back up. And even has some molded in landing gear right here on where it's the, uh, you can tell these are the legs, on his robot mode, like knees or shins. Yeah. And overall, it's a really nice looking jet. Like... That aside, and visible hands and feet aside, it's a really nicely detailed uh, jet mode. So, um, before transformation, I must uh, let's talk about his accessories because he actually comes with quite a few. He comes with uh, this cannon, these uh, two energy missiles. Uh, I don't know if that's their official name, but they're just called missiles, so I just call them energy missiles because look at them. Look at that texturing. Looks like an energy blast, but there they are. And. This thing, which is probably one of the more metal of weapons I've, I've ever I have encountered, it's either a serrated battle axe or or how I like to think it, it's a chainsaw battle axe. That is awesome. That is awesomely metal, dude. Even on the gun itself, there's like a little chainsaw right here. Once again, I like to think of it as a chainsaw. These might be just a serrated blade, but chainsaw makes it sound so much cooler. So here you have this uh, chainsaw cannon. It doesn't fire chainsaws, unfortunately. But it is spring loaded, so you just put the missiles in there, pull this, pull this thing, and fires the energy missiles. And that's about it. So to store these things, to store these on his uh, vehicle mode, there's like a tiny clip here, which you can just wedge these, um, and there we go. Just wedge it there on the wing, and repeat on this side. Wedge it there. There we go. For the cannon, simple enough. You just plug it on top onto this port. There you go. And for the battle axe, it's a bit more interesting. You can you can shove. You gotta shove it through this uh this port right here underneath the cockpit. Plus, you also need you also need to have the uh, landing gear folded up for this to work. And there you go. This is him with all of his uh, accessories on. And it doesn't look half bad. This honestly looks pretty fierce. Pretty, pretty ferocious. You got the missiles. You got the thing. Not bad. Like I said, not bad in terms of... Uh, when it comes to, ex uh, I guess, weapon storage and whatnot, this is, not, this is not bad looking. I've seen far worse. And also, unlike the last two reviews I've done, these weapons, I think, actually do fit the character quite well. So I'll put him off to the side and we'll get back to that later. So on to transformation. He's actually not too complicated in terms of transformation. So where to begin? I say that while trying to remember how he begins. Okay, so come over here. Fold this part out. Fold out the legs. Uh, see, unpeg arm, unpeg arm. You do a lot of unpegging. Take this piece. And... Do, do, do. That's right, unpeg foot, unpeg leg, and you have to f basically rotate this piece like so, fold out the legs, and push back in, and it'll peg into place 
onto like the there's like I don't know if I can show it. There's like two ports down there that peg into there. Push it up and you'll hear a nice uh, click. Then for this part, you sort of, uh, it's like this. Break it out. You get a head reveal. And then put the uh, nose cone into it and you'll hear a nice click when you when you push it into the uh, chest cavity. Right, then for the arms, just fold them out. The arms sort of uh, accordion in, kind of. So you just fold out. And out again. Then you have the arms ready to go. Then just angle the shoulders however you'd like. However, I think how it's supposed to be is sort of angled like so as shoulder guards. And that's it. That's that is basic that is the basic transformation of Dreadwing. Very simple. There is like one extra step you can do, and that's his wings can actually separate apart. Can separate individually. And you can have like this kind of um, peacock effect with his uh, with his wings, which looks really cool. It's a really it's a nice touch. They didn't have to do this, but uh, it's really cool. Sort of separate him apart a bit, and there you go. Now he has a more of a presence. Which um, any G Gundams fan fans out there, this kind of reminds you of the uh, Burning Gundams when he's about to unleash his super moves. He's like ultimate attacks. Like, doesn't it? Like, it's not just me. This, that's what this reminds me of. Even though I think the intention was, um, the intent was to, was to have it be, res have, it, have it resemble a peacock with its tail feathers out. But this honestly reminds me more of the burning Gundam, you know, about to unleash the, uh, the burning finger. Yeah. And yeah, not bad. The head sculpt, very Dreadwing. This looks just like Dreadwing as he does on the show. At least the face captures, uh, Dreadwing. And it's a not bad figure. In terms of articulation, the head, it just swivels. The arms, if you you move these out of the way, the uh, you have more room for movement because these are on ball joints. Rotation here at the elbow. And nice elbow bend. For legs, also on ball joint, can do a fantastic kick. And there's rotation here at the knee. And, can, and also bend in the knee and ball joints at the feet so you have all kinds of pivots. Which is always nice. And then obviously these things can also move, and these can also move. So yep, yeah, articulation, he's got it. I think he is a little bit stilted in the movements. Because of all the stuff he has on him, like you have to work with these in order to give him more uh, movement in the leg. Because they sort of interfere a bit. Same thing with the back wings, but he's got the articulation. He's got it, and he also has some light piping, though it's not really... Hold on. Yeah, you can kind of see, he's got some nice, he's got some little red eye, uh, light piping. So it's not bad. So, let's get on with his uh, accessories, let's bring those back. Because they actually have some, some more stuff with them. So, you have this. Simple enough, you have the uh, cannon. I guess if you really want to, you could sort of put these up here. Like, if you really want to. Looks kind of silly, so I don't, I don't particularly like it. Oop, just have the weapon. Plug it in. And this is sort of the simpler way, simple way of doing this. You just have him there, hold it. Take his battle chainsaw axe, hold it, and there you go. Simple enough, but then you have this uh, other missile here, just because. However, there is something else you can do. You could also plug, plug this onto his arm to have a sort of Megatron-esque fusion cannon thing going. It's another option. But then here's the interesting thing. These two weapons can actually combine together. On this back part, which... I think at first when I had gotten this figure, I started doing this because I thought this was how it was supposed to be. Like this and like this. This is how I combined them together, I think the first time. And like I said, it's an option. This is not in the this is not like the official way of combining them, but this is how I, I did it when I first got the figure. There we go. You can have like this entire mess. Which you can barely hold. Which you can't hold. Well, you hold his hand, but he can't lift it. So that's something. But this is not what you're supposed to do. I found out a while after how it's supposed to be is that this you just set off to the side. Then this. Oh, no. Not this. This. This is the front. You plug this in back here. All the way. And then you have him hold it like this.
And this is the proper way of having this weapon, which actually has a name. It's referred to as the Dread Assault Cannon. But this is the proper way of having this weapon. And it's kind of neat. I don't think it's anything special, but it's kind of neat that they did that. And I didn't, and I wasn't aware of that the first time. However, I kind of like having him, um, having it just, uh, hold it like, uh, like this, and then have this be here. I don't know, I actually like to store this away. See, so double up. And just, uh, store it there at an angle. And just have him with his, uh, incredibly awesome chainsaw battle axe. And I think I was able to get him to hold it in two hands. I don't remember how I did that. Let's see. Whoops. Do do do. do, do. Eh, close enough. Yeah, you, you can you can sort of have him holding it with two with two both hands. Angle the tail feathers, basically. His wings. And that's it. That's a uh, Dreadwing. Well, that's Dreadwing on his back. That's, uh, there you go. Yeah, that's Dreadwing. And overall, pretty nice figure. Pretty solid. He's got the basic amounts of articulation, which is always good. Uh, his weapons. He's got a. He's got quite a few weapons and accessories that can even combine together, which is always a plus. Uh, the vehicle mode's not bad. Like I said, I would have liked if the hands and feet were were uh, would be hidden better. And the transformation is nice, simple, and straightforward. How I always like it. And, hold on, there we go. And I really like this chainsaw battle axe. I'm sorry, that is a very awesome weapon, in, in my opinion. And that's it. And like I said, I even like this, this little peacocking effect of his, uh, of, his, of his wings. Which is a nice detail, which they didn't need to do it, but I'm glad they did it. And what I said, he has the articulation, and the overall design is pretty cool. So yeah. Uh, overall, nice, solid figure, highly recommend it. Now, some facts. As I mentioned before, he's not a repaint or retool of a prime uh, Robots in Disguise figure like most, um, like most of the Beast Hunter figures. No, he was an original mode, he was, he was an original mold introduced in the Beast Hunters line, one of the few ones. And, what was I gonna say? Oh, yeah, and it's exclusive to this character. Uh... Because as far as I know, this mold was never wasn't reused or repainted into anyone else, so it is exclusive to just Beast Hunters Prime Dreadwing, which is nice. It's really neat. It gives more reason to like uh, to get this guy since it's just since this mold is specific to him. And yeah, that's about it. Nice figure, really nice figure. Highly recommend it. So this has been my review of the Transformers Prime uh, Beast Hunters uh, Deluxe Class Dreadwing. This has been this is Composite Energo signing off. Peace out.